Hey there, StarCraft fans, it's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today it's going to be stats and dark here on Site Delta, bottom right. It is dark, top left, it is stats. This is from GSL Season 1 for 2024. It is super hot off the presses for my patrons. Again, this is going to be a Patreon game. For those of you who support me at patreon.com slash Paladin for at least $1 a month, you get to see this a month before anybody else. This was played... Basically, the day before this posts on patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin is an amazing PVZ. I did watch it on Afrika's YouTube channel, uh, The VOD. I did not watch it live because it was at like 3 a.m. mountain time, which is where I live. And I had to get up early to take my oldest son to get his driver's license. He did pass the test and hooray, we've got another driver in the family. <laughs> All right, so hatch blocking it here is stats. Man, I hope stats does well. I just, I think, I think Protoss needs stats to do well here, right? Right? Yeah, just, they need some hope. They need some hope against one of the four horsemen here. <laughs> All right, so 16, 18, 17, fairly standard, except for the hatch block that required the hatch to be at the third base. I'll call that the third base from now on. So what's the play? Dark? He, I don't know. He doesn't really have standard plays, does he? Dark's not someone where you're like, well, he's going to go Ling, Bane, Queen. He's going to defend a bunch. Then he's going to tech into Lurkers, maybe get some Hydras, and then into Ultras later. It's like, eh, I don't know. He'll do stuff like Queen Drops on your face. He'll go for Nidus Swarm Host in your face in 2024. I mean, he will do all sorts of crazy stuff, and that's what makes him so hard to play against. He's not predictable. Which is very fun from a viewing perspective, right? What's Dark doing while he's not? I guess extra... Yeah, I guess he was saving up for Queens there. I thought for a second there he was going to go for a faster third. But Overlord pops in and says, you know, probably could have gone. Could have gone for a faster third here based on that Nexus timing. But it's all good. It's all good. We're not going to worry about it. Dark has an Overlord perching spot here. Where's the Stargate, man? Yeah, stats is like, so I went to military and came back, and it's still Stargate opening? Okay. <laughs> I know how to do that. <laughs> not a problem, man. Stats has not been super strong here in the recent past since he got back from military. But again, he got back from military. What do we want from this guy? Right? Give him some time. Give him some time is what I always say. All right. Dark got, gets the third base coming up at about 2.30. All's well there. Pulls all workers off gas to drone up harder after he starts speed. Gets more queens out to deal with the pretty much guaranteed sky stuff to come his way. Whether it's oracles, whether it's phoenix, whether it's void rays. Guess what the answer to all of those things is? Queens. And maybe some spores, depending on what you're into here. Now, the first Oracle on the way. This is something that has changed for stats. Has changed for PvZ. Oh, you just let Ling's in. Okay. Uh, you do have to wall off, though. Mm. So, first Oracle pops out to help deal with these speedlings that are inside the house. Oracle name is Scotty from Matthew. After years of being told to beam them up to the Enterprise, he got tired of taking orders and went AWOL. Now he beams down. All who stand against him, including speedlings. Ugh, Depths try to... No, just, nope, nope, nope. We're not finishing this shade. Not even close. And ka -chow, Not doing it. Spread and creep between the natural and the third is the time to go here. And... Oh, there's still Ling and... What? This Ling has zero kills. He's very cute. Look at this guy go. He's like... Mm -hmm. I'm just over here in the corner. Don't mind me. Everything is fine. Don't even look back here because I'm not a threat to anyone ever. Yeah, once again, these Adepts shade in. I don't know if they're... Are you trying to scout something, guys? Or like, what are we doing? Just seeing if there are lings to defend you? What I was going to say, something that has changed is... Oh, boy. This is a surround. Is that you make more than one Oracle these days. Three Oracles is more standard, and Stats is firing up the third Oracle now. So, you know, times a change is what they do. Oracles, crews, and no spores. All right. That's four drones down. Good opening, and the depth gets surrounded and massacred. Six drones go down. Ooh, let's get seven. Oh my gosh, the spores. Why are we skimping on spores? All right, fine. Nine drones die in the first five minutes. The spores coming up. Guess when? 450. 
instead of closer to 350, and that's the difference. Do you want to lose nine drones? Or do you want to lose, you know, or do you want to lose like two drones by getting some spores up? It's the math, guys. It's just basic math. I don't know why Zerg players are so resistant to this idea. They just try to get away with as much as they can, is what it is. Right? All the best Zerg players just get away with as much as they can. How long can I drone before I need to make stuff? How many drones can I make before I need to expand? Right? How many expansions can I get away with? How many queens don't, do I have to make if I want to expand five times in the first six minutes? Right? Just all that kind of stuff here. Now. Three oracles. The three amigos. Uh, cruising down. Not going to find much damage there. Good queen positioning from dark. Just making more drones. Getting plus one melee attack early, which is interesting. Maybe he just wants the Lings and Banes to be effective. Maybe he's planning on Ultralisks later. Five minutes is a bit early to be thinking about your tier three stuff, but you know, if those Ultras have plus two or plus three instead of plus one when they pop out, it's nice. And the Lings having plus three and Adrenal is just insanely good too. Insanely good as well. Third base from stats rolling, excellent. Lings can't get in here. Hey, guys. Like, sure. Good effort. I like the effort. I do. But nope. That's not happening. Creep spreading down. And beautiful stuff. Uh, double expanding is dark here at six and a half minutes. So what I tell you, he wants to get away with as much as he can. With as much as he can. As early as he can. So he double expands to make up the fact that stats is the third base already. I love it. From him quite a bit. Storm's on the way from stats. He says Storm is still good, right? And it's like, yeah, it hasn't really changed since you left, friend. Queens, man. But finding some transferring drones again. Man, Stats just gets so lucky with that transfer. That's the second time he's gotten lucky with a transfer. That's incredible stuff from him. Has an Oracle died? Yes. One Oracle died. Dark? No. You're not getting in there. You're, I mean, maybe Stats left the front door open again. No. No, he did not. Creep spread. Pushing hard. Spire on the way from Dark. Oh, interesting. Early, early, early Spire here. Seven minute Spire is like, what are we doing? Is this Mutos? Is this super early Corruptor? You're just anticipating a Fleet Beacon here and stats going into Carriers? Because, I mean, I don't know. It's fairly common in the matchup these days. The current meta does seem to feature a bunch of Carriers, and I'm not going to spoil anything for you about GSL, but Carriers are getting some wins against players, so... That's the sound that carriers make. Mm, Lings tried it. No, this is just well defended. Tass is like, my fourth base is mine. Absolutely not. You are not allowed. It's like, did stats expand again like a madman? No, no stats did not. He's got uh, charge on the way. Storm is done. Hi, Templar have been here for a minute. They've got good energy levels. Storm, generally the answer to everything at this stage of the game. I mean, what can... I guess it does take a... Uh, takes a handful of storms to take down a lurker so i mean not the greatest answer to lurkers high templar are plus the lurker range stabs them in the face if they get close enough to cast down storms holy smokes it's mutas all right fine it's the mutalisks here from dark and um well how many phoenix are there none yeah what do i say about dark man this guy's weird he does weird stuff nice snipe on all of these tumors though that was some good stuff. Lings pop in. No. These Lings just sharking around, trying to find something to do in the mutas. Yes, are sharking around the southern side of the map. They are trying to stay out of range. There's no vision down here from stats, so this is going to be a total sneak attack. And he's throwing down an Ultralisk and getting Adrenal Glands at the same time. I kind of love this from Dark Man. Going to show up with mutas, force you to make something to deal with mutas. And then my Adrenalings and Ultras will crush you from that point on. Uh, that is what he would sound if he was stereotypically Russian. Dark is historically Korean, though. All right, so Mutas pop in. Get a couple probe kills. Three kills, four kills, five kills. All right, good micro there. Taking some Muta stabs, as you do. And then warping in a ton of Stalkers into the main. Sniping off three Mutas. Yeah, and seven probes go down. So three Mutas for seven probes is... I, I, I'm not going to give that a... 
good enough rating. Ooh, Fleet Beacon coming in. I think the Muta scouted that. Yeah, they did. Definitely did. So it is going to be a Fleet Beacon, whether that's for Phoenix and an Ion Pulse Crystals, or whether that's going to be for Carriers, or Tempest, or Porque No Los Dos, or a fast mothership. Whoa! At th uh, third base here at 10 minutes. I like it. I'm okay with a fast mothership. That's just like, wait, the mothership's cheaper? And it moves faster? He's like, I could make use of this. And then they're like, it doesn't permacloak everything anymore. And he's like, oh, well, we're going to give it a try anyway. Bainlings, nope. Absolutely 0% damage done there. I mean, force two high Templar to turn into Archons. It's not bad, right? Bainlings got speed now. Don't explode on the Archons. Oh, man. One cannon died. Good storm. One cannon died. For like 10 Banelings. Not good trades. Ultralisks are on the way at 10 minutes, though. Gotta love that. Ling Roach. A Ling Roach composition moving out against Storm. There are a couple of mortals in here, too. That's gonna hammer those roaches just halfway to death. More Banelings coming up, and Dark is playing the role of the double pronged harasser here. Weather coming from the right side. Weather coming from the left side. Burrows on the way. Second Spire coming in from Dark, too. Does he want. He's getting plus one flyer attack. Sure. Muta flock, not as big as it used to be. I don't think he's replaced any of them. Hard to kill probes, and there's a shield battery helping those guys out, man. But hey, draining energy off a shield battery is going to help future attacks for sure. Oh, free Archon. Terrible pathing. Ah, sometimes pathing kills units. That's a bit of RNG there. Oh, Ling's busting their way in. Banelings are like, can we get in there, guys? The mothership's like, where do we defend? Over here, over there. Banelings connecting. Five probes go down. Ling's going to town on the rest of the injured probe. Stalker's helping out there, too. But that's a cancel on Stats' attempt at a fifth base. For sure, this fourth base is getting attacked by Mutas, who are not really being microed at all. For Dark, he's not really worried about losing. Oh, they are trading surprisingly well against these Stalkers. Two to two here. I mean, even with the upgrades, dude, Stalkers at cost. Not as good against Mutas. Dark expanding up the right side here now. So one, two, three, four, five. He's going sixth and a seventh base here at 12 minutes. And he's maxed out. Stats is maxed out too. The Ling Roach army currently, but there are Corruptors on the way from Dark to try to deal with the Carriers. No! Ling's get inside the natural base. Gotta attack. Yeah, shield battery snipe. Good target there. I'm always a fan of that. This immortal pops out and immediately just gets absolutely murked by a bunch of roaches. Stalker's coming home to try to deal with this thing. Nine and Nidus Network's on the way from Dark. <laughs> it's like, well, that was a good run by. Let's make a Nidus, everybody, Burrow. Force detection to come over here and shut this down. And it appears there's plenty of protection for, well, actually not enough detection. Burrow that guy. No. There we go. Now an Observer comes in. And then a Nidus just comes up. Muto's providing that vision. This is in full vision of stats, though. I mean, if he's looking at it. These Muto's flying into cannons. And then, oh my gosh, just coming over and just harassing. Just a little bit of harassment. And the Nidus comes up. Oh, the Zealots almost took it down, but two Ultras popped out here. That's 13 minutes, and another Nidus is on the way. Mass Ultra is getting into the fourth base too, but oh gosh, Mothership, Archon, Immortal. Nope, nope, and nope. That is at least three Ultras down. Maybe a fourth will... Yes, definitely a fourth will die. Fourth will die, but uh, these two Mutalists are going to take down an Assimilator. No, Ultralisk, don't help us. We got it, and they did get it. Good job, Mutalisk. How many five kills and two kills? Oh, it's a two Ultralisk, two Mutalisk harass here at 13 minutes. Couple two roaches here at the third base. On Ultralisk at the fourth base. This is hilarious. 198 to 188 supply, but Stats has more money than Dark does as far as bank is concerned. All right. So finally, that Nidus gets cleared out. Another Nidus is coming up here from Dark. That's amazing. Uh, you guys, you might want to deal with these Ultras. Oh my gosh, they got the Templar Archives. That's big. Okay, so both Ultras died immediately, and this Nidus is not coming up. And this Muta remains alive. Nidus eruption sound happens, but I think it died at the same moment. So Mothership, you know, providing some value here. As per usual. Ah, 
Ah, Blink Stalker attack heading on in. Nidus inside the main base. There's nothing in the Nidus, so the Oracle's going to clear it out. Nice, but the hatch gets sniped. Sixth base or seventh base? I don't know which one it is. Ah, they got Broodlords, because of course we have Broodlords up. Yeah, Mothership pops the cloak, pops the time warp. Says, might as well use the capabilities. Dark on the left side gets Vanlings crashing into this fourth base, and 15 probes go down. It is 83 to 51 workers right now. Looking actually pretty good for Dark. He is crushing right now. Gosh, 29 probes have died. That's an eight kill Ultralisk. He burrow. I love the burrow animation for Ultralisks. I really do. It's so cute. They just like burrow their tusks in. <laughs> Another night is coming up from Dark. I don't know, man. 199 to 188 supply. Stats is like, well, uh, this is a problem for my stalkers. These adrenalings are on top of my stuff. This Nidus is going pop. Stats is pulling back from the Broodlords that are defending this base. Lings try to pop into that. Uh, is that the fourth or the fifth? I don't know. Is that another empty Nidus? Yeah, Dark just popping another empty Nidus up inside Stats' base. These Banelings are like, mm, you can't kill us all. You can't possibly kill us all. <laughs> Stats is like, ugh. I don't know if I can handle these brood lords. I've got blink stalkers, got immortals, got archons. If I could get under those brood lords, I can make it work. But these are faster than last time I saw them. I mean, that's not true. Since before I went to the military, it was good snipe on a queen. Broodlings chomping down. What upgrades do those broodlings have? Plus three attack, plus three armor. Yeah. That is some highly, highly advanced, highly, highly upgraded Broodling technology here. Stalkers down the left side. Going to snipe the sixth base again if they can get away with it. Good snipe on a couple creep tumors, though. It's never too late in the game to snipe a creep tumor, is what I always say. Replacing the Templar archives to his stats. He's like, wait. I can't make any more High Templar? That's not good. Quick, replace the Templar archives. When did that die? Uh, a while ago. The two Ultralisk harass stuff like four minutes ago wiped it out. Oh, good sniping, attempted baneling stuff, and what's it? Okay, yeah, so now the sixth base goes down. He brings some immortals with him. Oh, bling counter attack for Dark, though. This game is bonkers. This game is bananas. I cannot... Okay, seventh base. Uh-oh, Dark's going to lose the seventh base. And by that, I mean... He probably does? Oh my gosh, he probably does. But Lings are all in his third base causing issues. All in his fourth base, sniping down cannons. More probes are dying. Lings are chomping on zealots that are warping in to deal with this. They're taking extra damage as they warp in, but they're still fairly tanky, and they can buy time for other units to get in there. Rude Lords chasing all this immortal stuff. Stalkers can get away. Immortals less good at getting away from Brood Lords. Still a little bit faster. Back to do a corner means you got a recall, friend. And they do. Couple hits on that immortal. Not enough to kill it. Ling's popping in to see what's going on. We're still... Where are we Nidusing Dark? Are these Nidus worms dying? Are they defensive Nidus's? Stats poke in the front again. Nice fungal. Nice fungal, but... At this point, fungal's less about damage and more about chasing stuff that's been fungal than killing it because it is slow. Nice transfuses. Ah, oh, Infestor's going down anyway. Nice target firing here. Another, once again. Look, if you fungal a stalker six times, you can kill it. Fine, there we go. That's the whole point. Broodlords and Infestors. You can't run away from the Broodlords as well. If, oh gosh, what a horrible engagement. Why are you doing this? If you've been fungled and that hatch goes down again. Stats, man, four hatcheries have been killed. Resources lost 26,000 to 20,000. Dark has lost more. I keep thinking there's a Nidus up here, but it's just two Lings that have been burrowed in this area for like five minutes now. Very fun. All right, six base coming back from dark. Is this the seventh? I don't even know. He's trying to replace it. Stats has not expanded in a minute. He's at 56 workers. This, okay, this income graph is blue. This is like the bluest income graph I've seen in a while. Stats taking the top right base. I like it, it's a naked expand. There are packs of Lings roving around, and by that I mean there be that many packs of lings roving around. There might need to defend bases. 
rather than be out there on the map, which is giving Stats the time to expand like he needs to. Brood Lords, yeah, there we go. There's a fungal with a Brood Lord. Nice feedbacks on the Infestors. Oh, and by the way, they did announce a new uh, balance patch proposal for StarCraft 2. Did some stuff to Widow Mines, did some stuff to the recall ability. Oh, these immortals, though, standing in. Or we can. One immortal died, but that was like three ultras down, and all the three other immortals are alive. Lings roll in. Target fire the immortals. You in particular, they say. You in particular. And Blink Stalker is pretty good at getting away from stuff, but uh, not forever. Stats <laughs> continuing to poke up this area. I really think Dark needs to find this and kill it. Now that it's a Nexus, though, it can be recalled to. And oh, these Stalkers. The Blink. The Blink! It keeps Stalkers alive for days. There you go. Good job, Stalkers. Way to get back to safety there against those Lings that are faster than you. But hey, Blink. Plus three Flyer Carapace getting researched here. I don't know why we don't have as many Corruptors. What is the anti-air here? I mean, I guess that's really just if you want to kill the Mothership, I suppose. Hey, look who found the top right base. That's right, Dark did. But guess who's coming down the left side to take this base out again? Yeah, it's Stas. Does he want to step on to creep this deep? Hey, Lee! Up. They're like, we don't have any great targets, so let's kill these Stalkers, I guess. They were hoping there were some High Templar or some Zealots to kill. Sure, they do all right. Top right base does get wiped out. Good stuff. More High Templar being added. First stats, he's down about 20 supply. Bank for Dark is a little bit bigger, too. That's another dead hatch. Where? The Brute Lords are not in a position to save it. Look, Brute Lords are faster than they used to be, but they're not fast enough to be at two places at once like this. That's five hatcheries killed so far. One Nexus down. Yeah, yeah. One Nexus, one Fleet Beacon, one Templar Archives. Gotta love that. From Dark, going after some of the tech structures. Dark, though, just doesn't have a ton of cash. He's maxed out. He's gonna expand this top right area, but again, a lot. And he's expanding bottom left. So yeah, he's gonna lose one of those, he says. That's fine. We can accept that. Although losing both of them would be pretty bad. Where are the Brood Lords? Here they are. They're not here in time to save this base, though, so goodbye. Another hatchery. That's two cancels. It's again Ling Ultra getting into this third base. I'm not even sure if it's worth it to be here, guys. Not really a source of income for our guy Stats. Oh, who's coming down the bottom side of the map? Going to take down yet another hatchery. This is amazing stuff out of Stats. Crushing another hatch. Second Nexus goes down. Top right getting replanted. Bottom left, not getting replanted from Dark. And another canceled hatch. So that's six killed, and that's at least four canceled. We are at the 10 hatch number here. In spirits, if not literally, and this game is not over yet. Okay, Dark says, you know what I need. Let's go double Lurker Den. Double Lurker Den so we can get both the upgrade Seismic Spines and Adaptive Talons at the exact same time. Because this is largely a ground-focused army. Largely ground, and Lurkers are going to outrange the Archons, and the Immortals, and the Stalkers, so that's pretty good. And the vision provided by this one Zergling inside the base is so good. Once again, Empty Nidus. Top right base, Broodlords are here to defend this one, but not, uh, not enough to defend whatever is going down here in the south, which is an entire mothership with Immortal and Stalker support. Another Knight is trying to come up. These Zealots should be able to hack that one to death, but... Oh no, there are lings in this one, but it's dead, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a pop dead situation. Another hatch dies. Hydras are coming out! But there's so much storm, I'm just not sure that... That's not what we want right now. I guess the hydras are for lurkers. I, I apologize. Obviously, all these hydras are going to turn into lurkers, because hydras don't have a ton of value here. Uh, with all the storm that exists. They'd be great against a stalker, immortal, mothership set up what they're not great against is all of those things with high templar available stats expanding bottom left top right dark successfully has taken another night swarm erupts i don't know where that is oh it's down here Ooh, to snipe this base and then a recall to save it dude this game oh uh, 
Spirit stats, top right again, being so mobile with this army. Ultralisks, getting transfused, getting kited. Ultras have a speed upgrade. Doesn't mean they're that fast in situations like this. And the recall saves the bottom right Nexus. Dark's got 2,000 minerals, but only 60 gas. He can really only make lings right now. He spent a ton of his gas on these lurkers he's trying to rely on. And every Nidus is 75 gas, so he can barely afford a Nidus right now, but there's a risk involved with that, you know? Cracklings try to get in here and wipe out some of these, but the cannon count is just too high. That's not even any great control there from Dark, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm not sure they even killed a probe there. So it is 64 to 60 workers' income is now creeping up and favoring stats. Over the last few minutes or so, Broodlords are like, all right, look. We are not intended to be defensive units. We are intended to be on offense, and there are Tempests on the way because that Broodlord count is a little bit too tricky to deal with, I would say, with just a handful of Stalkers and Archons. Especially if there's Lurker support, which there is. Ultras trying to take down this base. The Lings couldn't do it. But this Ultra has 48 HP. Shield battery overcharge. Man, 14 probes go down, but these Ultras are dead. Look at that. He burrows that one in. Oh my gosh, the burrow is so good. Time warp on the ramp. Sniping both of the Lurker Dens would be insane. This game is absolutely nuts right now. Tempest, do get on top of the Broodlords. That's humongous for stats. He gets one of the Lurker Dens. He gets the other Lurker Den. The upgrades finish. They did both finish before that happened. Drones are dying. Counterattacking with... Oh, this Broodlord. Ultralisk unburrowed is joined by his little buddies and they're going to take down this base. That's so big for Dark. But on the other side, Stats is sort of unimpeded right now. Nothing bad is happening to him and as he gets right into the natural base of Dark, he's going to get into the main base of Dark, which seems pretty bad, but another Nexus goes down. That is four Nexuses down, eight hatcheries down, several cancels. They're like, if we can take down this bottom left base. Yeah, but guess what exists, you guys? Recall! Recall exists, so you just have an entire Protoss army chilling in your base, killing all your stuff, and you're like, well, the Protoss army is here. I don't have to worry about it if I go attack a base on the other corner of the map. I mean, they can't even deal with this without a recall at it. There are too many stalkers, too many cannons, too many shield batteries, so these guys didn't even have to come home. I do find a few overlords that doesn't supply block dark, but it's kind of close. That did hurt him. He's down to 184 available supply stats. This is actually 180, which is the worst place to be. Dark has expanded up to this top right corner. So he is effectively on three mining bases. Oh, Lings get into the house, but then a recall. Just all the way across the map. These guys get left behind. They should be probably sent out somewhere. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. This game is bonkers i knew it was bonkers that's why i'm casting it but holy cow this is an epic tag game look at it okay we're gonna throw up some spores here to try to defend this top right corner army value is even which is not great for the zerg and god these storms i'm not sure if those lings killed a single stalker okay if the hydras and the lings attacked together i think this might have gone a lot better for the arc and by that I mean he's kind of winning this battle anyway. Sort of. He's not going to, but it was close. It was way closer than it should have been. Those Hydras, I don't think they have speed upgrades or range upgrades. No, they have, they do have... Okay, they have the range upgrade. They don't have muscular augments. Ah, there we go. They're on the way. Oh, more Hydras came in and cleared that out. All right, so 116 to 104 army supply dark is up. Dark is looking strong here. Stats is mining effectively two bases to the three bases of the Zerg. So we've sort of hit equilibrium here economically. Zerg player being on more bases where he needs to be. I know equilibrium is maybe the wrong word. Tempests. Yeah, trying to deal with that with Corruptors. Dude, that cloaked Stalker with 17 HP owes its life to that cloak capability. Another Nexus going down. Bottom left. Just undefended. Throwing up a Nexus, you're not like you expect that to work? I don't know why. Top right base done. Army not in position to deal with it at all. Holy. Oh, what 
That's uh, nine hatcheries and a hive kill. That is officially 10 with several cancels in the mix. Nice revelation. Knowing where those broodlords are is incredibly nice. And, uh, okay. So remember when I was like, Dark's on three bases mining? It was more like on four bases mining. But now he's on two bases mining. Trying to deal with this. Oh, Hydrostasis. Ling needs this. Nexus, where's the recall? 18 probes have gone down. That Nexus is going to die. All right. Stats been knocked down to this mining base. That's it. That's all that matters for him. Dark technically on two mining bases. Nobody's happy with their economy. Stats is on 14 workers here at 30 minutes. Couple lurkers out. A fungal gets tossed down. The Broodlord's dive bomb in. Time warp pops up. Everybody bails out here. Transfuse is trying to go down with these queens. Lurker Unburrows runs because he's been revealed. Tempest trying to get hits off on these Broodlords. Every hit counts, even if it's getting transfused. Dark with Hydra Ultra coming in the left side. Uh, Fungal on the Stalkers. They're just standing in and fighting. Dark might just lose his newest source of income, but so is Stats. Stats has nothing going on. Look at this group of random Hydras just busting up here. Trying a force field, keeping the army out for now. Ultra, let's break it, and he does with his fat body. Breaks that force field. But Dark just lost a hatch, lost 12 more drones. Oh, way more drones. They were trying to burrow. That doesn't work, but there's detection, friends. And then recalls back in. Storms the Hydralisks, and Sturz gets the win. Dark taps out in 31 minutes. In 42 seconds. What a match. What an absolutely fantastic play there, man. Oh, <laughs> what a game. What a game. 31 minutes of nonstop insanity. 74,000 resources lost for Dark today and 56,000 lost for stats. That is seven Nexuses killed, 140 probes died. Stats had zero probes at the end of this game, and he won. And he won. 11 hatches and one hive got killed today. The rule stands. If you kill 10 hatches against a Zerg player, you win. That held here today. 69 drones died. Nice. Dark still had income, but what he didn't really have was a lot of army. His army at the end of the game was... Two Infestors, an Ultralisk, a Broodlord, and nine Hydras, which is just like, ugh. And the Hydras are all in varying states of dead because of the storms and whatnot. And also, I'm not sure he had any detection over here for the cloak. Did he cloak? Let's find out real quick. Hydras, though. Three, three Hydras means stuff. So the, that pops storm. Oh, there's the cloak. Okay. So at this point, let's take a look. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the cloak pops. He's like, I don't have any detection with this army. Everything's going to die. And it does. And yeah, even though I have some income and you don't, my army value is poop. And that's it. That is all she wrote. So, all right. That was fantastic. That was a great, great display of PVZ stats. He's back, everybody. He's back. He's back. I'm so happy that he's back. I'm so happy he's capable of taking down somebody like Dark. We need Protoss Hope, and this is some Protoss Hope, isn't it? It is only one. No, how many motherships died today? Zero? <gasps> Stats made a single mothership today and kept it alive the entire game. That's crazy. I mean, part of it is that I don't know that Dark used Vipers at all in this game, which is kind of the anti-mothership uh, unit. So that helps. If you want to keep your motherships alive, ask your Zerg opponents to not make any Vipers. It, it helps. It helps a lot. So GG, man. That was, mm, that was chef's kiss. Chef's kiss, beautiful stuff. All right. That was amazing. That was amazing. Just the storms, the constant movement on the map by stats being places where the Broodlords were not. Recalling into places to defend. Uh, <laughs> just can't play Protoss better than this, man. He worked his butt off. He got the win, and that's all you can ask if you're a Protoss. So, GG. That was amazing. That was so good. 
All right, so that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a GSL match just from the group stages, man. This isn't even the playoff or anything. How good is that? All right, so if you liked what you saw, what you heard today, you can hit that like button. You can subscribe. I'm here five times a week with StarCraft II content, sometimes more than that. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.